difficulty of the plateau next year. Um, I, I, um, I'm very, very excited to be here today, and it's uh, it, it it's my first time that you know, uh, telling uh, my story to, um, you know, kids in in high school. Um, I myself have a uh, one of my uh, you know my my kids uh, is in high school, and another one graduate, and two more going to high school very soon. So um, it's good for me to uh, tune in with them. And uh, I also want to thank Paulo Campos uh, for reach out to me uh, and uh, to to do this presentation. Uh, thanks, Paulo, <laughs> for help. Uh, I didn't know about the, all the Noma, the all the reach, and and the uh, and everything that Noma does. So this is this is excellent. Uh, I like to share my presentation. I don't know if I can do that. Um, let me just hit this. Uh, yeah, it's di disabled, so it's not allowing me to do it. Okay, so I've got it here. Everybody can see this? Yes, we can see it. Yep. Yeah, yes, we can see it. <laughs> okay, great. So um, I'm trying to. The bar in Zoom is actually blocking me from doing it. Okay, got it. All right. All right. So one, two, three. Okay, we're ready. All right. So um so my name is Juan Salas Romer. I'm the president and CEO of uh, of the NHR group. Um and uh I'm gonna talk about uh first I'm gonna talk about me, my experience in uh, the career of uh, real estate development, uh, but also going to talk about, you know, what what involved being a, a, a real estate uh, developer and, you know, all the different, you know, what the journey is like. Um, I'm going to go through uh, some of the projects that we've done uh, and then some of the, some career advice and late after that, we'll take questions. Okay. So with that, um, let's start with, uh, I thought of starting with a slide that Give you some of the uh, your feeling of you know what are the what are the projects one of the things uh, the hobbies that I like so I don't know um, my audience very well but uh, does anybody know about arepas? Yeah. Anybody has eaten an arepa before? Yeah. 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 Okay, so now we're talking. All right, so arepa is uh, it, it's uh, it's a symbol it's uh, of of uh, my culture. I I was uh, you know originally I was born in Venezuela. And uh, I moved to the U.S. Uh, 21 years ago, and uh, arepa is uh, my favorite food. I, I like it with uh, cheese, with meat, and you know, uh, black beans and plantain, as you see it in the picture. That's a that's a full meal right there. Um, the other thing uh, to tell you, you know, right next to the arepa, there's my dog uh, Kenta. It's a, a Labrador Retriever. It's a. It can still on the first slide, Juan. Was that still looking at the first slide? Do you have slides with your food and your dog in it that we should be seeing? Yeah, the number two one. Are you are you seeing here? No, we're just seeing the opening slide, slide number one. Oh boy, that should be very boring then. <laughs> Can any you talk see about that? any talk about food is always interesting. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the um, presentation mode out. Um, are you able to see it now? Uh, no, we're still on the first slide. You have two screens. No, I only have one. Um, one. Yeah. Do you have two screens? Do I have two screens? Uh, no. Yeah. Let me see. Sometimes, if you stop sharing and then reshare again, it might. Uh, let me reset. let me do it again. Yeah. Sorry about that. No worries. We're excited for the dogs and yeah. our oh. <laughs> You see. Can you see it now? Uh, we see the opening screen. Oh, there we are. Yep. Okay. Okay. There now you can see it. All right. Now you can. Now you can relate. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I was talking about the wrap on the upper right corner picture, uh, and then um, then here's uh, my my Labrador. Uh, you know, next to my Labrador, it's uh, one of my hobbies. It's dancing, salsa, merengue. I don't know if you guys are into it. Um, I'm sure you know. Oh, some salsa dancers here. Yeah, there's some salsa dancer here. Perfect, perfect. 
um um we're 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 uh, we're six in the family you know got four kids uh and uh one of my favorite books is uh atomic habits um it's about you know about uh um creating habits uh for growth uh for development and uh how tiny changes make remarkable results uh so i've been involved with uh hotel the hotel world you can see my picture up upper left corner it's my the inauguration of New Haven's Extended Stay Hotel, the New Haven Village Suites. Uh, that was back in 2015 with a $3 million renovation that we did in the hotel. It's a 112 key hotel. Next next to it, it's uh, an, a sample of a uh, Airbnb project uh, that we have in downtown New Haven. The third one is the, um, the Palladium building, built in 1860, 1855, actually. We went through a, a huge renovation of that property, and that's where... We also have on the top floor we have a co-working space, and we're gonna we can talk about this later when a Q and A. Um, and then the next one is a a uh, a renovation of uh, a Blyley Corner in New Haven. There were you know townhouses that we that we, de we developed. Uh, so my experience uh, goes across uh, real estate development, uh, real estate financing, hospitality, uh, Airbnb, uh, small business development. And, and originally a BIPOC business accelerator program you know, for minorities. Um, let me go to the next slide. I hope you see the next slide. Do you yes. see the next slide? Okay, so what drives me, right? So what, what drives you in life, right? So very important to, to know what, what, are, what are the things that really get you um, very happy in the morning to, to just be, begin your journey, right? So I like you know getting involved in things that have a socioeconomic impact. Uh, I, I like to... Um, work on things that are strategic, uh, you know, associate things that sometimes they think that they're not connected, but real, real understanding the connectivity of things. Um, you know, I've been involved in many entrepreneurial, um, you know, um, journeys and, and uh, I, I really enjoy the process. Uh, I like to connect people from all walks of life. Um, you, you'll see it in, in different facets and as part of being a, a real estate developer is that you, you really like, need to like that because you, you're going to be involved in, in connecting people from all walks of life. Um, project and growth driven. Uh, that's another trait of a of a real estate developer. Is really you know process oriented. Uh, and then um, I, the the last one's more more closer to my heart, which is you know witnessing you know my country collapse. Uh, I don't know if some of you know about Venezuela and how we basically lost democracy and and how the country collapsed in in many ways economically and you know civil rights and all that. And uh, and. I'm concerned as I see too many warning signs in the U.S. and and wanted to become a solution and and that kind of prompted and will, could prompt another another whole conversation of, on a on a venture or business accelerator program that that I'm involved with. Um, so let's talk about what is real estate development. So the Wikipedia version of of, of real estate development is a business process encompassing activities that range from the renovation and release of existing buildings to the purchase of raw land and the sale of developed land or parcels to others. So, you know, as you can see, it's very, very broad. Uh, basically, you have a property or, 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 or land and how do you transform that? And that's really one of the things that is most exciting about real estate development. Uh, in the next slide, I, I define what, why is it so cool? So it's transformational. It's probably one of the things that that's uh, more incredible in terms of really, um, you know, the leaving something behind, right? When when you finish your career and you develop your career saying, okay, okay, I, I was part of that. I, I built something that everybody can see. So that's one of the, the coolest thing about real estate development It's a creative process with lots of analysis involved. Uh, number two, um, you know, we we turn properties or land into something more valuable, you know, something that the market feels it it's a uh, it's it's a it's a it's a better value than they was and it pays for and then there's money involved and and it so it's very it's very rewarding. Uh, you know, it's the place where people leave. We impact the life of people. People the place where people work. The place where people learn and play. Uh, and there are many types of real estate. You know, there's a affordable housing in the residential spectrum. Uh, workforce housing, luxury housing, uh, there are hotels and shopping centers, educational institutions, event spacings, art galleries, entertainment venues, I mean, you name it. Uh, real estate development it, it encompasses all of that. Um, it's about providing jobs, you know, engineers are involved, architects are involved, construction, trade, etc. It's about building wealth. It's about really 
um, you know, earning um, money while you sleep. Sometimes when you when you buy a property and you rent a property, you develop it, uh, and then you get that additional cash flow. Uh, and plus when, you know, sometimes, you know, one plus one equals two, but sometimes one plus one equals six. And what that means is sometimes when we leverage capital or using the money from, from banks, we turn that number two into number six. And I'm not going to go right now into many details, but it's one of the things that it's very rewarding in the, in the real estate career is how you turn the money into your, the multiplied effect of, of your dollar as you invest. So let me go to how do I become a real estate developer? So don't expect linearity here. <laughs> you know, I, I came to real estate development by accident, uh, you know, and, and then by doing uh, what, what I mean by that. Um, I came to real estate development uh, by uh, working in a business model for uh, funding real estate um, developers myself. So I was, I was in the other side of the transaction uh, back in 2008. I started a company in 2005 called Sunrise Financial. And what we did was, you know, the people who flip houses, the rehab houses, and you know, they're all over the place, right? There's there's many programs about it. So my company uh, used to finance those people, right? So there was a, actually a big company, a company that grew a lot here called City Homes that then became uh, Fortune Builders. And uh, they're, I think they're now out of California and, and, and they develop a lot of property all that. So my company was financing, you know, some of the projects that they did. Uh, now, it all went well until 2008. Uh, what happened in 2008? It was a great financial crisis, right? And and what happened with that is that um, a lot of the my clients, um, or I would say all my clients, who used to just, um, you know, take a, take a loan from a bank and then pay me back because I was providing the, what they call the bridge financing on, on projects that a bank would not do, but my company would do, uh, they were not able to refinance and not be able to pay me back. Uh, they were not able to sell the property. It was complete collapse. Uh, so, so what does an entrepreneur do when that happens? Entrepreneur has to pivot, you know, to change quickly. Uh, so it went from eight, eight employees uh, uh, that were were prepared to do loans to three employees that were prepared to manage property <laughs> in a heartbeat. So I turned a portfolio of loans into a portfolio of properties. You know, so all of a sudden, I, 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 I had 60 properties in Connecticut uh, that I need to take care of. Can you imagine that in a, in a year? <laughs> uh, learning a different, I had to learn a different business model, understanding what works and what doesn't. I, I had to make a lot of calculated risk. And I guess the most important uh, lesson is, it's not about the how, but about the who. So I, I became uh, very good at you know spotting you know talent because that's what you do when you need to run and, and go very quickly. You know, learn who who can do the right job at the right time and form teams. So that's kind of the way I kind of fall fell into a real estate development. Uh, you fast forward a few years, and then we have the portfolio of things to show. Uh, we have, uh, did you do you are you seeing the so the next slide is feature pro projects. I, I'm hoping that you're seeing that one. <laughs> you're not seeing the rep again, right? <laughs> All right, so upper left corner, um, you know, we're talking about um, a, it was more of a place making strategy. This this was very fulfilling, this project in the corner uh, was um, basically nine townhomes uh, that um, were part, were right in the fringes between, you know, East Rock and, and Fairhaven. And uh, we renovated that corner. We actually named that corner, uh, we changed the name. We we used one of the, the names of, um, of, um, of, of one of the better streets uh, to, to highlight uh, the area. We completely transformed, you know, all siding, uh, renovated, uh, upgraded the kitchens and all that. It was, it was a place that was really run down, blighted, and we turned it into a place where, you know, people who uh, go to Yale actually uh, leave now. Um, the second photo to the right is uh, the Extended State Hotel. I talk a little bit about that, 112 keys. Uh, big renovation in, in between 2015 and 2018. Um, uh, I, I got uh, an architect involved in, in the whole conceptual uh, project, and I had uh, landscaping design uh, architects as well uh, to really create a feeling of o oasis feel in an area that's normally industrial, where you have we are close to a parking lot and all that. And it it was uh, very rewarding to see everything coming together. I mean, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, the the next uh, the next property is the Palladium Building. Again, 1855 was built. Uh, this, this was an adaptive reuse situation where we uh, it was all offices and now second and third floor uh, being transformed into apartments. Uh, and actually now they're transforming to Airbnb apartments. Uh, we actually have sort of like a front desk in the co-working space, which is really cool on the top floor. You're welcome to to visit anytime. Uh, it's in, uh, in the corner of Orange and Chapel in New Haven. Uh, and uh, this was a really, really big, big undertaking because, you know, some of the older buildings, uh, you, you, you don't know what you're going to get when you start working on it. So, right, architects? <laughs> so the, the next project to the right is a, is a school in Fairhaven. And it was more about uh, adding units to that school. Um, and we're going to talk about more about that as, as we go through the next slide. Uh, the bottom left, uh, it's a it's a it's a thirty unit um, uh, building uh, built in the early nineteen hundreds. Uh, it was more of affordable housing situation, uh, section A situation that was we were involved. The project to the middle, uh, the bottom middle, uh, is Ashmont Flats, and this is this is a project that involved um, uh, adaptive reuse situation. The corner building you see right there was an infamous bar. You know there was there was shootings and all kinds of things. Uh, then it, it was abandoned, but it was it, that this building sits in the in the in the intersection of three neighborhoods. Uh, one is the Winchester uh, area um, where the, the the factory is. The other one is the Yale University campus, or, you know the uh, the edge, and then the Diswell community. So you can imagine how important it was to really transform this corner because this, this is where people unite, people get, are integrated. So it was very fulfilling project. Uh, there, there are nine units right there. There's a there's a retail as well. The bottom right project. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. And and this is where you know Paolo and I met uh, through the Patrick Green Arch Architects. Um, that they they help us um, you know design um, and uh, envision better what what we wanted to to do in Fairhaven Heights. This is a project called the Heights on the River. Um, we went very far, but we didn't build it at the end. But I want to just Talk about the process. So I think it's a it's good it's a good education. Again, um, let me go to the next slide. Um, I put together this slide that that will highlight at a very very high level uh, what the whole you know real estate development process is about. Uh, but starting from from the very beginning, you know more more about you know the investment life cycle of any any property that you see and you want to you want to start you know working your way into opportunities. So the on the left side you see deal flow. So basically, companies like ours are, are looking, looking. You're constantly looking for opportunities. So where do you get those opportunities? Is from brokers, attorneys, accountants, real estate networks, architects, you know? people who know you uh, after you're going you're going at this for a while and say, hey Juan, I think there's an opportunity here for your for type of development. So little by little you start getting the, the, those opportunities, those deals because you are in the know, right? Uh, the next item is sourcing and structuring, you know, opportunity assessment, deal underwriting, you know, writing purchase and sell agreement, really trying to lock in property, uh, the, the, the opportunity, and really understanding that that there's actually an opportunity there. And the, an opportunity is about really the, the economic value, but also the different things that you could do to, to the project and the things and the and the risk assessment that you that you have to uh, be aware of. Um, wh what do I mean by that? There's an environmental risk. Uh, there could be, you know, any physical risk, legal risk, uh, structural risk. I mean, all kinds of risk. Um, I, I mentioned that real estate development is very rewarding, but as anything that's very rewarding, typically has a lot of risk. <laughs> so uh, you got to be very careful, and it's very you got to be, you know, strictly focused on a, a lot of different factors. You deal with a lot of people from from different different sectors, different uh, expertise, and you got to bring all that together. And in a timely way, because uh, time is money. You got to make sure that you close on time. You want to make sure that you you develop on time. Uh, so on the acquisition, you want to make sure that you have your capital line up, your 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 financing that line up. Uh, then on the development phase, you know, it's about being efficient. You know, timely execution, integration of the legal, engineering, architectural, contractors, integration for with property management. And then the management and refinancing. What what happens is once once you renovate, you develop the project, uh, you go back to the bank, and the bank gives you a longer term uh, financing at a better rate. 
uh, because now you actually created value. Now there's there's a property that's actually uh, producing cash flow, and the bank the bank can get paid, and and then you lower your cost of financing. Um, you deal with all kinds of aspects, you know, maintenance, maintenance uh, resident relations, marketing, um, you know, and and then to the end of the process, which is basically maximizing proceeds through timely exits, you you got to look at the economy, you got to look at when is the, the right time to exit the project. So this this is a very very high level you know schematics of what takes place uh, in a company like ours when when we when we go through a project. Um, I'm going to run through the next slide because now now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so forming the development concept, as you see, you know now now it gets a lot more complex, right? So now you're looking at all the you know site selection and you know market testing and evaluating site, architectural engineering, legal acquisition. Uh, you got to you know analyze you know rough cost, refined estimates, and you you get you do a lot of back and forth. You do a lot of back and forth with with legal. With engineering, with architecture, uh, to make sure that uh, the project, the opportunity, the, the things that you envision, and the numbers that all line up. I can't tell you how many times I knock on on uh, on Paolo's uh, door to say, you know, can you tweak this project this way? No, no. Whether it's our community, it's telling you something because it was a historic site because was it wasn't easy <laughs> uh, because that that also involved a lot of the the type of, of material that that you're actually using. Uh, and that impacts your cost to uh, anything the way of uh, environmental and you know water rights. I mean, you name it. Um, the feasibility process, you know, preliminary market tests, detailed market analysis, design and marketing strategy. You know, getting site control. That's super super important. Without site control, there's nothing. You know, you got to make sure that you lock in that site, that property. Identify government actions, environmental testing and assessment, refine schematics, elevations, test all cost assumptions. Uh, like I said, I was going to run through this, but I think you get the gist of it. Uh, the next one, deal making, planning and finance, implementing the marketing strategy, securing sorry, government regulatory action. I mean, some of the projects, uh, so, sometimes there's gaps in that, you know, your cost is, is too elevated to really make money on a project, but sometimes that, that gap is filled by government. Sometimes there are grants uh, that help you fill, fill that void. Uh, and so we got to be creative in that process. We will make sure that that we drive the, the team to to success at the very end. So it, it's all coming together as 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 you as you put all the pieces together and everything is is starts to click. But every you could you could see that everybody's like checking on each other in this process because there's a lot of negotiation. Like it says in the bottom in in the, in the middle it says the developer decides details of the project as a result of negotiations with marketing and management agents, architects, contractors, lenders, and equity brokers. So what you see here spells out negotiation. It spells out really making sure that everybody is on the same page. So that's a lot of what you do when you do um, real estate development. Um, then the, the construction. You know, finally, when you get to a, a, a final project, you acquire the asset and you get funded and everybody's cheering. Well, you're not done yet. You get you get the construction, <laughs> and that that could be that could be a pain. You know, you got to be on time. You got to be on budget, uh, and there's a lot of things that go in the way. I mean, you 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 typically try to have a you know ten percent buffer, but sometimes that ten percent buffer ends up at twenty five percent. You know, like like it happened to us in uh, the Palladium building. You know, an old, a very old building that you know all of a sudden we didn't know there was this. Uh, you know, additional pump that, that needed to be placed in, in the building because, you know, New Haven, Sierra New Haven has an aqueduct that's, you go back to the 19th century, you know, underground that doesn't pump enough water. You have a, you need a special pump to pump the water, you know, four stories high. So you, you're dealing with things that you won't believe that really, I do have to deal with that. And so, you know, you, you better get, you know, people who are experts in the field to really help you out in this journey. Because you don't you don't want to be surprised and 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 be in a situation uh, in trouble, uh, because a lot a lot of people get in trouble with uh, by not really you know assessing the right risk or or really having a, the right buffer in terms of cash and, and all that. Um, so I'll, I'll run through the projects, the Heights and the River. It's a beautiful, spectacular project. Unfortunately, we 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 couldn't make it happen at the end. Uh, but you know one of the things that that it was uh, great about this project is that. Um, it was just going to, it's the beginning of what they call the Fairhaven Heights. Uh, I don't know if some of you know Fairhaven, Fairhaven Heights, but, but this space basically connects uh, two neighborhoods together. 
and and this is like the gateway to 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 that community. So it's a plan. It was a plan makes uh, use development for middle income residential communities situated at 1.808 acres in Fairhaven Heights. The project to be designed with new urbanism principles in order to promote walkable streets, caves, neighborhood connections, restaurants, etc. Um, just a, a very high level table, you know, financial performance, you know, what we were expecting. So you talk to your investors and say, well, you know, this is your money is going to be, you know, making, you know, an average about 24% uh, per year through the life of the, of the, um, of the project. Uh, you have your construction costs, you have your, your, uh, you know, your breakdown in terms of your partnership. Uh, you, you look, uh, you look at the breakdown of, of, uh, in terms of the timeline, you know, when you get bank financing, you know, all the things that go into a timeline. You go, you see timelines everywhere on the on these projects. Um, let me just go quickly. Uh, you look at, at demographics, you look at trends, you look at the, you know, what, what's happening, you know, population growth. Is there going to be an investment in the area? Anything that impacts a project? Um, you look at, you know, the foundation, uh, you know, is it, you know, for instance, this one with slab or, or raid, the flooring, what type of floor you'd use, uh, what type of construction, is wood frame construction over concrete, uh, that type of windows, um, the roof. Remember, we, I, we talk about historic, uh, historical aspects. So, you know, some of the materials that we wanted to use uh, were not good for, um, were not in line with uh, his historic standards. Uh, so when they wanted wood and we wanted some, some other material that was more resistance, uh, uh, easier to maintain, well, you know, sometimes, you know, history get, get, gets in the way, you know, and then that brings uh, the project uh, to be really, really high cost. Um, you, you go through schematics with the architects, right? You go through, you know, site planning. Uh, so this is the way it looked. Um, actually, it looked today the, the same way, but the, this is the site that we were going to transform, basically uh, three blight lit uh, uh, units uh, closer to the water on the left side. Uh, and there was a you know, building with uh, eight apartments and, and a retail, um, a corner shop, a pizza shop. And then in the, in the other corner, we had a convenience store and, and one apartment. So the idea was to transform all of this into 60 apartments and uh, with retail. Uh, so this is really the making of it and saying, okay, this is going to look like this now. So you, you see the site planning progress. So you have a representation, like high level re representation and concept. Or what that's going to look like, where your parking is going to be, you know, how the other buildings are going to connect. Uh, do you see this little connection between the bigger building and the building next door? We we'll told you that that this is a, a unit building, so this connection allows us for, to uh, have a bigger a bigger space, a headcount, and this you deal with with uh, zoning regulations. So we needed to have. Um, uh, you know, I, I think at that time we're looking at 60,000 square feet or something. So a thousand square feet per apartment. If we want to do 60 apartments, we, we needed to bridge the two buildings together. So we expand the possibilities of the project by doing these little things. Um, what else? Um, you have, uh, you know, more detail level of the apartments, how the apartments are going to be uh, distributed, what the layout is going to be, um, a little bit of the feel of the neighborhood. Um, you know, this is the before and after. So this is this is the way it looked today, and this is the way it was going to look. Um, some of the things that we could do internally, you know, some of the ideas of how those apartments are going to look. Um, you know, the the gym, how the gym is going to look. Some of the projects that we've done in the past and, and how they look. So this one is Ashmoon Flats, one of the projects that we were, were involved. So it's actually these are units that we actually did and, and sold. Um, and so, you know, with this, you you get an idea what everything involved. I don't want to want to go too far on this. Uh, I'd like to at this point shift into some of the you know professional tips for um, for kids your age. You know, you're in high school right now. Uh, I don't know if uh, what year you're in, but you're going to be thinking about you know what's your next step. Uh, so let me let me show you a little bit of an overview of to me what's important. Uh, whether you become a, a, an expert in a field or you are a master of many trades, um, I always say practice servant leadership. Servant leadership is about really helping others grow. Um, it's really uh, becoming uh, becoming someone who could be uh, relied upon, someone who, who actually uh, people trust. 
I would say the first thing you want to do is really try to have that attitude in life. Um, the first point I, I, I had in this slide was the five seasons of an entrepreneur. Uh, for those of you who are more like, you know, mastering many trades and really looking at to do um, a lot of things or, or project or project oriented, uh, the five seasons of an entrepreneur is basically, you know, what, what are the things that you need to really grow? One is capacity. You know, you, when you're when you're being trained at the at a, at a plant school, uh, you're adding capacity. You're adding your ability to uh, learn some some skills, some, some training, some tools that will, will will help you advance. You gotta know. You gotta learn about capital. You gotta learn about you know how do you how, how finance work, right? Uh, how do how do uh, invest in a project? You know how do the, how do banks work work? How to borrow money and all that. You gotta look for coaches. You gotta look for mentors. You gotta look people who know, who have walked the talk and been have, have been out there just like you at one point, and they they like to teach, they like to help you out to grow and to connect you with with the networks. Uh, you 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 gotta you want to be involved with the communities that uh, go the community that 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 resembles what you want to be in the future. You want to be part of different communities, different trades, industry communities. Whereas engineers like like Noma, right? So you want to be involved with, you know, if you're a minority and and you're 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 an architect, you want to be involved with Noma, right? So you want to because that that connects you. Inter, you see, you, you enjoy the intersection of the many differences, in the disciplines in, in development, and and last, you got to, you know, for any business, you got to have customers. You got to you got to make sure that you have enough of a market, right, to expand. Um, Another, another tip of my, my entrepreneurial journey is, you know, anything you do, you focus, you got to focus six months on that. Just focus, focus, focus until really you sell the first unit, you, 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 you click, everything clicks together. T typically, everything that, that I, I really focus on really takes me about six months to really, really connect the dots and really start a gener generation, generating traction uh, and three years to build a following. This is true when I started uh, real estate development. Uh, the first three years were really, really tough. Really, the first year, nobody, nobody really believes in you, right? You know, it's like, who's this guy who's new? He says, you know, you know, what, what's your background? Uh, and you're really, really trying to, you know, build a name for yourself. Uh, well, what do you do? You start helping people who are already out there, you know, that, that are known, right? And you connect with them and you make sure that you make them successful. And then they're going to be very thankful and, and they're going to, you know, pay forward. Um, and then the last slide, um, I want you to think about your Ikigai. And this is a concept that uh, I've been um, really um, reviewing throughout my career ever since I, I learned about it. And what is your Ikigai? Your Ikigai is a Japanese concept uh, that relates to uh, four factors. Um, the things that you love in life with what you're good at, with what you can get paid for and what the world needs. Uh, and you can see that, you know, some people um, have a passion for something, right? They have a, you know, what they, something they love and they're good at, right? But maybe you're not getting paid for, right? Or well, some people are good, good at something and get paid for, it's a profession, but maybe your passion is not there, right? Or sometimes you get paid and the world needs it, it's a vocation, all right? But, not you're necessarily love it, or you 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 might not be good at. So Ikigai combines all four, you know, passion, mission, profession, and vocation together. So try to find your Ikigai in your career. Try to think how do I connect the dots? Because the day you do it, you're you're going to be unstoppable. You're going to have the grit to withstand all the setbacks that life is going to bring you, and now enjoy all the successes. So with that, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Juan. That was wonderful. It was really great to hear your path and how you pivoted to during such a sort of tough time. Not many people would sort of say, okay, now I have this and I'm going to pivot and make this successful. Um, I also know you're an entrepreneur in many forms um, and something you've done is created this knownpreneur. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So one of the things that I um, that I wanted to work on was uh, um, being an, an immigrant myself and, and looking at uh, you know basically the asymmetries that I see in wealth and income. 
uh, in a country that that's so rich that has so so many resources. I, I've always like, you know, why what can I do to help uh, in terms of you know leveling the playing field to people who are really the periphery of that you know funding superhighway that exists. And in many so um, I, I came up uh, with an idea. Uh, during COVID, you know, I guess a, a lot of us had a lot of time to think, right? Because we, we were in lockdown. Uh, and so so one of the things that I saw basically uh, in, in I, I started looking at demographics, it's like, you know, on the wealth side, you know, Black and, and Latino population um, are versus white population is eight or 10 times less less wealth than, than white population. So there's a, you see a huge gap. And it's a it's a it's a population. If you look at Black and Latino, are typically are, are about thirty percent of the country, thirty two percent, growing to forty percent by by twenty fifty. So one of the things that I I saw was that uh, how do you how do you really uh, level the playing field and really develop that wealth uh, is through entrepreneurship. Because entrepreneurship is is really the the uh, the the great wealth equalizer. You know, if, if you're an entrepreneur, you're a problem solver, you're someone who, who could create jobs, could develop. But a lot of people are skilled and talented and and uh, and have the, the right product or service, uh, but they just don't have the right resources or training when they actually need it to grow. So what 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 I did was I, I, I developed a, a program for people who've been in business for two years or more uh, with sales of $50,000 or, or more that they that needed to scale they need to grow their business uh i like that seg that segment of the entrepreneurial journey because that's a segment of the entrepreneurial journey that I, I i could see you know real results very quickly and we go through a 16 week um what we call business accelerator program of training of coaching we go to 12 hours of coaching 16 hours of training uh, we go. We review what we call KPIs, key performance indicators, goals, and all that, and we all, we connect them through um, uh, through capital. We have, everybody leaves graduated with ten thousand dollars in line of credit, and a one year membership to the to the Greater New Haven Chamber of Commerce. So they connect to larger larger markets. Uh, so that's uh, that's very fulfilling. We're in the fourth uh, cohort now, uh, and uh, we graduated uh, thirty five and going now to forty seven graduates uh, by May. That's wonderful. Mike, I was wondering if any of the students had any questions for Juan in real estate development? Yes, we have one from Jefferson. Um, my question is, uh, how would you say, how would you get into real estate development? Like, what steps do you think you will have to take to accomplish the goals that you have done? I'm sorry, could you repeat that a little bit louder? Yeah, he said, um, so as a high school student, what are some of the first steps that um, a high school student can take to get his career going in real estate development or her? Right. So so one 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 that that many people will tell you is just, you know, internships into um, some of the trades. Um, internship was uh, architectural firms or or engineering firms uh, or or even legal firms or or, or the, on the capital side. So. You know, capital, engineering, architectural, design, you know, all the trades that are, are part of the of the real estate development process. Uh, you could develop a an expertise on one subject, uh, and that expertise will take you to a community. That community will take you to then uh, if you're a person who starts looking at, at the big picture and connecting the dots and saying, hey, you know what? I, I want to do my first project by myself and bring the people that I know. It's really hard to just out of nothing, just do it, you know, because you, you're, you're bound to have a lot of failure because you're, you don't have people really mentoring you. So look for mentors, look for people who can mentor you in the different trades and then little by little get into it. Network, networking, right? Yep. Networking. Yes, we have another question. Um, how much Come up money? Closer. How much money would you say you need to get started up with um, real estate development or real estate in general? Um, I don't think there's a there's a dollar number. There's actually people who are speakers on this this topic. They said start with nothing. You know, I'm sure I'm sure you you heard about it. <laughs> uh, you don't need money. 
So, okay, so you, need, you, you, you do need some money and you, you need to raise capital, right? Dep but it depends on the project because you could, you could do, uh, you could buy uh, a fi what they call fixer upper, a, a, a property that, that's run down and, and you could buy it. And, and if you have a partner or someone who could, you know, come with you and, and, and work on, on the bank side, um, then the, the bank could probably give you 70% of the capital that you need. Uh, and you need about thirty percent, so need to bring bring that thirty percent. So if it, if it's a you know fifty thousand dollar project, which I don't know if there's one now in Connecticut because everything has gone so up so high, but in two thousand eight when I started doing this, you know it was about fifty thousand dollars a door, you know for for each apartment. Now it's probably eighty to a hundred thousand. It depends on the on, on the area. I guess if if you go to the more affluent areas, it's probably two hundred to one hundred fifty. But it you know try to it, it's not really. Um, you know, how much money you really need is, is really how do you get to those resources and opportunity? I'll tell you something. Um, my, money follows opportunity. So if you're able to spot uh, our, the, a property and you're able to get your numbers right into what that property could be worth tomorrow and you can make a case, money will follow. Okay. That makes sense. So and how would you say you could um, find those investors that would help you um, buy those um, apartments that you would need to flip? How do you what? Buy the investors that you were talking about that would um, help you pay for the, the, the loan for the bank. How do you find them? Yeah. Well, you you find them typically uh, by, uh, by uh, proving yourself that you're a trustworthy person. Uh, and that happens when you go through an internship or you, you help someone who has the resources and what's your name? I'm Jaden. And, and, and that person say, you know what? I, I worked with Jaden last summer and he did all this spectacular. And now he wants to go to the next level and he wants to start his own, his first property, first project. Um, I think we, we should give, give him a shot. The time that you have someone, you know, that already walk the talk, go through that process and you help them, right? And you are you're a reliable person because you trust worthy because you you make them have success on something. He said, you know what? I can I can go back on his request, and I could probably maybe think about it, or maybe I introduce someone to him. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. Any other questions? We have one more question. Another question. Uh, what books would you recommend us to read? Uh, what things, um, what lessons book would you like, tell us to take? Books or resources to uh, get started? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think that I, 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 I like, you know, learning by doing, you know? So i tell you something. Um, have you, you heard about Habitat for Humanity? Huh? Habitat. Habitat, Habitat for Humanity. No, have you heard about it? No. So. So they build houses and they recruit a lot of volunteers to build those houses and there's training involved. You know, that's an organization that you could probably find out, you know, they, they, they're building houses in, in the neighborhoods and, and see if you could take a, you know, do, do a little bit of that experience, you know, see, see how it feels, you know, okay. I think you, you, it's just, you're going to try a lot of things, you, you know, time, time, you have a lot of time. <laughs> so you, you just try, you know, one of the, try different trades, you know, right now you have, you're in a position that you could try a lot of things and a lot of people could, could help you uh, a little by little, you're creating your resume, by the way, once, once you start doing all this, men, you, you, this training, you put that on, on your res, on your resume, guess what? The next person will say, oh yeah, you went through this. And then the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and all of a sudden you have a wonderful curriculum, I'm sorry, resume, that, 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 that could open doors to many places. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone Wait, else? I have one more question. Yeah. James so, got another one. Is there a like minimum age you could start doing like real estate? It gets like be 18 legally to do real estate stuff? Or can you just start at any age if you have like the capital and people that could help you invest in it? I mean, uh, honestly, it's not really age um, defined. Uh, I mean, obviously, age has is connected to um, typically on, on the, experience, the experience that you have, but it's really 
is is really the uh, how quickly you you connect to uh, to the right resource at the right time and 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 the experiences. Uh, there, there's some uniqueness to people and, and cases, so that it's a uh, it's, it's very you really can't define it for, by age. I would say you know if you're a high school student and you're inspired, you're excited about that, you know get your feet wet. I mean, what are you going to do next summer, right? What are you going to start doing the, next summer? What what are you going to who who you know your Rolodex? You know how many um, what's a, what are the contacts? What are the people you're going to knock on the door and and say you know do you offer internships? I like to. But have your cover letter prepared, right? Have your cover letter prepared about the things that really inspire you, the things that you really like to do. So I was wondering, do you, do you offer any internships? I feel like it would be a great experience to be able to um, work under a real estate developer such as yourself. You took my, you took my. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 um, but project by project. Uh, if next summer we we're in between uh, projects, I I would take I would take a few interns, absolutely. That would be great. Um, yeah, people must have to go and like see what you guys do out there. Juan, do you have any um, projects under now that we can maybe take a field trip and come look at and see sort of construction in progress? Um, we have no construction in project projects right now. I'm I'm right now um, actually what I'm working now it's in the um, in the conversion of a hotel the hotel that you saw into apartments, uh, but that we're, we're dealing with the legal side of it. Which is not nothing fun. <laughs> uh, but I wish I, I would have a project that that's under construction because that would be wonderful. Okay. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have a timeline for that project to when you think it would start construction? Um, probably Q one or Q two of next year, but okay. not not really sure. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I gotta gotta go back to my my partners and, and, and figure that out. <laughs> All right. Cool. Any other questions? No. No more questions? I think that's it. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Juan. This was so great to hear. And, um, you know, the, I feel like the students here actually got a lot of answers to their questions. So internships, internships, internships. So start working on those resumes, um, those cover letters. And you saw Juan's email at the start of this presentation. So I expect you all to be sending him some resumes come spring. All right. <laughs> thank you, Casey and Paolo and everybody there. Mike, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Juan. Good luck, guys. Wonderful. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you, everybody.